Welcome back, peeps, to Perfect.dev, where we give you cats the freshest dose of dev snacks. Now with your amazing hosts, Alex Patterson and Brittany Postma. This episode is sponsored by Builder.io. Visually build on your tech stack. What up, peeps? Hello. How are you doing today? <laughs> Welcome. We have Alyssa and Catherine joining us from the Progress slash Kendo UI team. Is it like progress and then Kendo UI is a part of it? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Exactly is that, that accurate? I was trying it's to think close. of the like, right? It's like progress, a parent company of Telerik, the creator of <laughs> Kendo UI. And oh, we can keep going. Like, we could make it longer if we wanted. Like, it's so oh, deep. Yeah. <laughs> what is Acquisitions that? Acquisitions are uh, fun. <laughs> Awesome. Seven ways to get to Kevin Bacon. What's that word? Oh, six <laughs> degrees of bacon. Six degrees. <laughs> yes. yes. Degrees yes. of Kevin Bacon. Oh, wow. <laughs> um, so, yeah. We have derailed <laughs> already. If you guys don't mind, um, <laughs> Alyssa, would you mind starting and just kind of give us a little bit of background about yourself and yeah. how you made it onto the Kendo UI team? Oh, yeah. So, my name is Alyssa Nichol. Uh, DM's always open on Twitter if you want to chat about code or nerd stuff, but I am goodness, I'm a senior developer advocate at Progress, and I specialize in Angular for Kendo UI, but I, I'm like getting the .NET, I will come on her React shows, I have no, there are no boundaries here yeah. with that, but I'm a huge nerd, I love the front of the front end, um, and I was just blessed enough to stumble into advocacy because I was um, programming at a startup, and my boss told me, I don't want to see your name on any more conference rosters. And I said, even if it's during like the weekend or my vacation. And he said, you should be thinking about our startup and not conferences. And I said, hey, husband of mine, can you help me find a new job? So we, <laughs> we started looking and a friend who was on the DevRel team at the time, Tara, she was at a conference with me and she said, you'd be a great advocate. And I said, tell me more. And it's just serendipitous. And so three years later, I'm just really loving the role. And if it, like, we, I know Catherine and I, I think we've done a show on like what advocacy is and, but it's just this really cool cross between programming yeah. and like sharing and community building. So I, I love it. I'm really if, happy if with it. If you guys it. ever figure out completely what a dev advocate does, <laughs> let me know. We've we talked about it several times. <laughs> We a just had a, another meeting on, like, we think it's this this week, so mm -hmm. maybe we'll do that. I think yeah. we refine it at a company over time, too, so it may start out as, like, all the things, and then as mm -hmm. you get a team, you have to break it up into the right chunks. <laughs> and then yeah. a startup, it's what you're focusing on this month or next month. <laughs> Sorry, uh, Catherine. Mean, yeah, yeah. No, we just <laughs> Catherine out of the conversation. Come back, no, give us an introduction. <laughs> Uh, my name is Catherine Grayson Nans. I am the developer advocate on the React side of things at Kendo UI. Um, I also do kind of designer focused stuff. So doing like designer developer collaboration and kind of taking the design angle to all of our components and everything that we do. Because um, that was that was what I did. I went through a weird and winding career path. <laughs> but where I started off in graphic design and then kind of slowly made my way over to front end engineering and then was like, psych, DevRel. <laughs> so. We're the same. I started with graphic design too and found my way to front end engineering. So I love it. I always have yeah. to ask people that have made this journey. Do you consider yourself a designer now or a developer? Mm. Both. I yeah. usually just throw a slash in between them and call it a day. Designer yeah. slash developer. <laughs> I'm definitely more developer now. I think I realized I like actually building the things out more than I like just working in like Figma or something. It has entirely depended on the job that I've had, which has been yeah. both cool and kind of wild to just feel like some jobs have leaned a little more design heavy. Some have leaned a little more dev engineering heavy. I feel really lucky that in this dev advocacy position, I get to do a lot of both, which yeah. is fun. <laughs> so. That's really yeah. cool. Speaking of what does a dev advocate do? Who knows? A little design, maybe? <laughs> like, a little video yeah. editing, a little uh, <laughs> community it? building, a little Discord yeah. or something. Yeah. There's so many, it's like, you know, oh, we needed a logo for this community group. Well, I guess that's me. You know, like it really yep. is like. <laughs> I'm uh, glad we're all on the same page. I, sometimes I'm like, I don't know if I'm doing any uh, of this right. It's really, it's painful when you got friends over and they look at you and they say with pure like honesty in their eyes 
what do you do? And I'm just like, how much time do you have? Like, it's yeah. <laughs> what do I not do? That yeah. probably don't. Yeah. And I'm they look, my mom, my mom's just like, honey, I don't, I don't even know what you do. And I'm like, mom, it's been like <laughs> years. I, you had time to learn this. Like, so it's, I don't know. If if the people nearest and dearest to us don't know, I don't. It's hopeless. I was like, you got people past the like you work on computers, so at least there's <laughs> more to it now. No, see, I've learned that we we cannot speak we cannot speak those words <laughs> because you'll get people out. like your realtor, your realtor who will be like, "Can you help me with my email?" And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> "What?" <laughs> You're like, I don't know what an email hey. is. No. Does anyone know what email is? Like, email is the worst client ever. Doubt. <laughs> Believe it or not, on my route from designer to developer, I spent a long time doing email design and development. Oh my God. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah. And honestly, yes. <laughs> I'm like, of fact. I really want to like corner Catherine and get her in a room alone where she'll teach me all about email design. Like, that sounds it's fascinating. Been so long. I just. <laughs> it's- <laughs> It's been a minute. I'm sure. Email it's design is tough too. What, so doesn't it sound? Intense. Doesn't it sound fun though? Intriguing. It's like. Mm. <laughs> you know what I used to, do, was, me of, like, what? I used to do email design and development for a pharmaceutical advertising company. Oh my goodness! So pharmaceutical just advertising. Layer on. Oh, that I just I'm jealous. I'm jealous. <laughs> what, what, what were you saying? It reminds you of. Oh, it reminds me of like way back when you first learn html and you're like laying <laughs> things out like very yeah. specifically and, and like gotta keep it small oh, and like because you can't have it too big because gmail will be like do you want to see this whole message <laughs> click this button and i'll open another, another window like there's this whole thing to it. <laughs> yeah. so uh oh. I, I was chatting with tim the other day about dev advocacy and and he had to throw this comment up mm. he doesn't <laughs> yeah. know either none of us know <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I mean, it's it's great though when you, I at the beginning of this role like three years ago, I was like, what am I doing? Am I doing this right? Am I just a blog post writer? Like that was like my. And then, um, I I really didn't vibe with our lead at the time, and lead switched, and I just grew wildly into the role, and I found like my niche and the space where I do the best, and so I think it's really a lot about too like because we were talking about it earlier like. DevRel can look different depending on your company or your team size or your needs, right? And so I think just also just like the team dynamic can really empower or take away from, you know, whether, and I think that it's no matter what role you're in, but I found that to be particularly true. Team dynamic is one of the most important things. If you care about the product you're developing or like advocating, (laughs) then it shows in the end product. (laughs) Yes. Yes. Speaking of products, (laughs) what is (laughs) UI? That is so smooth. <laughs> I've never seen a smoother transition. <laughs> oh, Kendo UI is a component library, um, and it's natively written for what framework or language you're in. So we are not just a JavaScript shop. We support .NETers and all sorts of, I mean, we're constantly looking to, should we support this framework? Should we support that language? Um, but right now, at least Kendo UI for Angular has over 100 components and they are built in Angular and from the ground up. And then I know Catherine's on the React side. Are you, you're more than me, right? You have more, I think. No? Yes? More than 100? <laughs> I think you're 100 think plus. If they are 100 plus. I think, I thought they were about the same. Oh, are they? Okay. Angular now. I, I think always, both- every time the React team comes out with something, I'm like, of course they get that. We're Why constantly we a little, a little one ups. <laughs> a little, yeah, I think we're both we are. in the like one tens though, right? Of like component numbers. I think so. Speaking of sure. what frameworks it supports, I see one very specific one missing what? from your oh, home page. Here we Wait, go. Hang on. Let me tell me. Mm. It, if you say solid, I'm okay with it. But just like, no, it's right there. Oh, Svelte. Yes. <laughs> we. Oh. Okay. Wait. Can we share? No. Wait. No. I, mean, I don't think. Oh. So. Consider this. A, I think that a was bad like. Tease. <laughs> I have to go now. <laughs> you have to. Oh, it's this? been fun. We we're both about to get fired. <laughs> no, 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 it's no, it's totally fine. Um, we just don't have jobs now. I have to go. Uh, yeah, no, it's, it's okay. <laughs> just, just send yeah. Brittany the repo after we talk. Okay. We're thinking about it. We're How thinking about, about it. Yeah, we're thinking awesome. about it. And we can promise no nothings of promises. That's all I can say. <laughs> yeah, so we can promise literally nothing at all. 
<laughs> and you're you're like Brittany, you're like, yeah, it's right there. And you literally point to a hundred different stickers. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> I'm like trying to parse what you're I pointing didn't at. I'm like, see though what you meant. <laughs> you did, you did, because I was just like, I did. Oh. <laughs> It's the only one that to me, like looking through the camera and back, that's apparent. Yeah. But of course, I it's saw not. I saw CSS, I saw Google. I, saw, <laughs> oh, yeah, I was like, you see all of it. I only see a cat. She... So that's just me. Cat. Yeah, you you focus on it for that one. <laughs> so I'm gonna I'm gonna throw up kind of for for all those visual people out there a little mm. Kendo yes. uh, UI. So Kendo kind of. I'm going to totally butcher this and I, I hope I don't get beat up on Twitter or whatever. I'm going to call it like a ninja like thing, even though I know Kendo is not ninja based, <laughs> but that's kind of what this guy like reminds me of. Yeah. I mean, he's the Kendoka and <laughs> Kendo is like a brand of ninjury, oh, right? It's, it's like a, it's a martial it's, art. It is a, <laughs> thank you. Ninjury is not a word. It is a martial art. <laughs> and I we like do. Ninjury. <laughs> that just sounds like what happens when you get hurt as a ninja. It's a modern <laughs> Japanese martial art. Thank you. Hey, no Googled Googling that. on Fridays. Sorry. <laughs> and we have, so we have on the JavaScript side, we have our Kendoka guy. He's really cute. If you go to the .NET side, I think it's under frameworks, there's going to be one for like .NET MAUI or, oh, you're just, you found your way to a old Specifically old. in Kendo UI. Specific, so yeah, you have to yeah, that, over I'm like, into oh, our Telerik. Components. He's gotten himself in a rabbit hole. Uh, do the all products drop down? Yeah, see Devcraft, see those little guys down there. So we do have a ninja, and that's for the .NET side. Oh, and then I forgot about that. Mm -hmm. It's been so long mm -hmm. since I was on .NET. Oh my goodness, I'm <laughs> learning Maui right now and having such a blast. Like it's fun. It's fun. It's Maui so. a .NET thing. I'm like, I want yeah, to Maui now. It's essentially what Xamarin's moving to. So. But yeah, it's it's the new hotness. It's still in preview, but it'll be released in a couple of months. But it's really cool because like what I'm working on with some of my .NET friends is wrapping an Angular app in a .NET MAUI app and then shipping that to like mobile or desktop devices. Because with the MAUI Blazor combo, you now can bring webby things into it. And so I'm just like, yeah, that's that's what I want. Like, and it sounds <laughs> ridiculous. Like I know how crazy I sound, but there are people, really large companies that I'm not allowed to mention that are doing this to solve problems like to get to desktop or to get to mobile so i'm like yeah we should definitely mix all the technologies like <laughs> i think it makes sense why build something two or three times if you could build it once and maintain one it one time thank you Catherine. Yeah. thank you it makes me feel a little less weird <laughs> no i mm. yeah this is why i want to become call it more efficient. popular like more support <laughs> mm -hmm. so but, no. I, I want to take and uh, learn more about how you guys create the different components on the frameworks, mm. but a company that I work for, Builder.io, see this next transition, it's great. Mm. Um, <laughs> they make mitosis, so maybe we can talk about it right after this advertisement. Today's podcast is brought to you by Builder.io, visually building the web. Builder.io has one of the most powerful visual editors in the industry. Unlike other tools, Builder actually produces the code for you. You don't have to completely switch out your framework either. Just use one of the handy SDKs that are available. There's no limits to what you can build. Instead of limiting your marketing team, start to optimize and let them do the work. This will allow your web developers to get back to the hard work that it takes for other components, allowing your team to do A-B testing and personalization. Stop worrying about bugs in production. Just use the site as it is, then you can analyze and start converting all of your customers with Builder's built-in heat maps. Stop limiting your growth with developers' long lead times. Start building, optimizing, analyzing, and start growing faster. Don't take my word for it. You can sign up for free today and start building the web visually with Builder.io. And we're back. <laughs> it's like magic every time we come back. I don't know. Um, so uh, what I was kind of leading into there, like you guys have these different components. I, I actually heard Alyssa, you said kind of, I don't know if the React team like had that out first or has more. And I was like, mm -hmm, wait a minute. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. like every kind of component system I've heard about. So it's like Ionic. They have their kind of web component stuff. But yep. Stencil basically creates theirs. And then they got to kind of wrap it for each framework. We have Mitosis, which you write in JSX, and it creates all of its component library. I'm so which curious, I still like, question why it's in JSX. No, we, <laughs> we should we should all 
in our life question why anything is in JSX. What? And I will walk away from I that now. I just wanted, this I was just, a welcoming space. Yes. <laughs> I thought, oh, hot takes. Hot takes. I love you. It all. is a hot take. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Catherine, I just, I just get re- mini rant. You are like a front end girl. You are a designer and you are fine with not having an HTML file. I'm just going to, I'm just, I said it. I, I said it. What I am is incredibly messy. And so I love for everything. Uh, I love that it's all together. I actually found this separation mm-hmm. that like stark uh, template and JavaScript separation and Angular to be more unintuitive. Although probably just because I started with React and then did Angular and then jumped back. But yeah, I don't know for me to be able to just kind of read it top down and yeah. have it and stick that it in the brain. For See, me. that's the problem uh, with React for me is that it's JavaScript and my brain has to switch from HTML when you're writing the markup to JavaScript. And so it's yeah. different for me. I actually, I like, when, I, when, when I'm writing... Place, little this, little that, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Organization, who is she? <laughs> I know I kind of like move off the like defaults in Angular where it has mm-hmm. like the three files. I always do one file. So like I have mm, my string template with all of this stuff, the JavaScript mm-hmm. in there. It's yeah, spell, you can just put it all in one file. It's just got its own net <laughs> areas. <laughs> I, so back to my original question. Yeah, <laughs> sorry, sorry. Yes, I I totally derailed. So I yeah, almost we, got lost on this one. We do um, have uh, it's we do have different teams for each one because and yeah. I know there is a way and we actually used to because I think we back in the day we started with jQuery I think was mm-hmm. our first one. Catherine. I think that was our first yeah. for a long time. And it was great. We product still too. still support jQuery, um, but like moving from that as different frameworks started to come out. They did wrappers and they found they just wasn't performant enough. And so they hired individual teams. So we have an Angular dev team that writes the Angular components, like in Angular for Angular. And we have the React one and we have the, you know, the .NET MAUI and the Blazor one and like we're all over the place. Um, And so it's just it because we have like the ability to spin up those teams and to make, you know, the support for that, because that's another part of our our components that people really, really, really love is our our dev engineers that are there for like, hey, I can't get this component to work with my API or what like, and so then we'll take your code and we'll help build it out the way it needs to be. And so I think that's another powerful part of just having the UI components. And so you can just throw them in and go, but then all like with the millions of features that they all have, but then also just the support, I think is our, 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 what is it? Our double pronged effective wow. I this horrible selling what? marketing. This is why I'm not allowed on the sales team. I, they're like, what is happening? And I'd be like, I just sold it. All right. I sold it. Can someone You're write welcome. down double prong effective wow? I, I need so. a pen. Hang on. <laughs> <laughs> but we do take like community fee- we have a feedback portal. I think it's feedback.telerik.com. And that's for all the products, but then it'll go let you filter down to the more specific what you want to have a feature request. And that's actually, you know, I mean, once you start getting in the like hundreds of components, you start to kind of like, at least in my mind, I'm like, where do we get ideas from? But it's really all of like our, our customers. It. And so if the React really- community is like, hey, we need X, then often their dev team will focus on that and get that out. And then I'm over here looking at it like, why do they get X? You know, so I that's <laughs> that's where that comes from is you know, different teams and what they're working on. So <laughs> that's really cool. So how do you go about like from a, a structure wise within the different teams and especially in the engineering group when um, I'm just going to throw out the button example, I guess, when, when we want to create a button and you go <laughs> over to like the react team and they're like, no, we're busy with other things. Are you going to release that first? Like, what is, what does that whole flow look like? And maybe you haven't created new components in a while. I don't know. Mm. Katherine, do you want to speak to it for your team? Like what that flow is like? <laughs> we definitely are creating new components. I want to make sure that I understood the question 100%, which was how are we prioritizing new components or? Especially across the teams, I would say. So like, do you yeah. have to be in agreement that Angular and React will release a component at the same time? No. Um, and that was actually when we were kind of doing the like, what do you have? What do I have? Yeah. Uh, it's because our roadmaps are pretty much entirely informed by the feedback and by our users. Okay. Uh, mm. And that will differ kind of naturally depending on frameworks and what people are building. So yeah. we have seen a little bit of difference. There are, I think at this point, it's very few, like five or less components that are in that one are and not in the other. 
And usually once we have kind of done the research and worked out, you know, mm -hmm. what one, you know, if React really needs something and the dev team puts in the research and does the user testing and all of that, then oftentimes Angular will get it kind of in the next release or two because yep. the bulk of the super heavy lift has been done and it's something that we can throw in. Like, hey, also, you didn't ask for this, but it's cool. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, we'll and that I think we have like a like a mama roadmap that's like for all the products we eventually want to end up here because we yeah. don't want like one to be stronger than the other or one to be, but like exactly how Catherine says, the teams use what they're learning to inform the other decisions that are made on other frameworks and just kind of move forward because um, even though our communities might be vastly different, our customers' needs tend to be pretty similar. <laughs> so that's, yeah. it's kind of, yeah, moving in the same and direction. We have a lot of people that build stuff kind of cross platform that will have something in React and something in Angular and are looking to create a consistent look across all of their products. That's so a good trying to keep them. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. That just like scared him off, Brittany. I don't know if the whole <laughs> no. mitosis thing. No, be. like so. I, I didn't mean, want to interrupt enterprise you. companies wanting to build something that's sustainable and switching from one framework to another has been like an issue, or just providing multiple platforms for dev, dev teams to mm -hmm. use. So I think that mitosis is doing the right thing and providing kind of a universal language. Mm. regardless if it's JSX to write something in <laughs> and spit out other code. <laughs> I just am not very versed in mitosis. So that's why when you said that, I was like, tell me more, Brittany. That's why I'm, I'm not <laughs> really well versed in it either, but it's, it's the builder.io thing that they're building mm. out. Alex, you want to talk more about it? Yeah. I mean, you probably said that most of it, like the TLDR type level is <laughs> as far as like you write, once in JSX and it's able to create different components for many different environments, including like Stencil now they just released. So um, it really allows you to kind of have all these frameworks. That's why I was kind of curious if you guys mm. are custom building or if like you're actually getting down to like, we wrote all this in native JavaScript and here, take 95% of it and then make it React or 95% make it Angular. So like there's not a lot of rework type of thing. Yes. Um, it's kind I'm of. I'm kind of curious as well. <laughs> when, they're pretty uh, separate. There's a lot of collaboration, but all there of them was are built. Natively. Oh, and then <laughs> when web components, like real web components, not like what we had two years ago as web components. When web components can become a thing, I know the teams were talking about like doing something like you're you're describing, um, and being able to move to that kind of system for you know sake of like not re re duplicating things. But yeah. um, but the the main concern is. It performs as it is a native, like as if it is a native component. And so right now, writing a native component from the ground up has been the way we get there, but it doesn't yeah, you know, that's how we're going to. So. I mean, if, you, if you ask anybody on the Ionic team, like they went down this web component road and to get their mm. React portion out, it was tough. Like there's a lot involved in moving that. So um, I'm kind of curious. It's been a, it's been a long time since I touched Kendo, just because I don't work on the enterprise level, and that's probably a, a lot of the product. Um, it used to be that Kendo UI core was free, and like anyone could use it for any project. And then like you got into the heavier stuff, which we can dive into mm -hmm. and show off. But like Grid was always like anyone asked me like what's what's the best tool, I'd be like Kendo UI Grid. Like mm -hmm. just go use that. It has yeah. everything you'll ever need. Is that yeah. still the case? What does that breakdown look like? Yeah, I know the I was talking to the team about this the last time I was in the office because I was like, why? Because we Quinta UI Core was like an experiment on the marketing side uh -huh. to find out will we be able to because there are there is this level of dev that I've found the the .NET people on our team don't so much find this, but I really think Catherine and I have seen it where it's it's like the the dabbler dev or something where like they have either side projects or really small projects and they want to just throw in kind of UI and get going. And so that was really what core was targeted to. But we found a lot of super high up corporate teams were just jumping to core and being like, well, we'll just figure it out and we won't have grid or something. And so we actually took a huge dive whenever we released like the free version, hoping that the free version would actually get the word out there more to like lower level devs. And so um, pricing has been like a nightmare, like as far yeah. as like just trying to figure <laughs> out like 
how can we be friendly to smaller communities, but also still keep our corporate brand? And so right now there's not, I think there's, it's like a bundle. And so okay. you buy the bundle and you get the, this, this, and this included. Um, but I, that has been something that I brought up with the team and it's just really fascinating to hear the history behind it. Cause it's not just our company that ha- was responsible for how the pricing is right now. It's actually like Back in the day, whenever uh, Kendo UI was first created, there were we have competitors, obviously, and they like with price, like pricing wars. I guess they, they were trying to teach me the history of it because <laughs> I am super noob when it comes to financial stuff. The pricing wars and how other companies were responding to our components is where it ended up with today, and like that's why it is the way it is. And because I was like, yeah, this doesn't feel the same way as other JavaScripty things do, and they were like, well, let me tell you the history. And so <laughs> it's it's messy, it's messy, but yeah, that's where the the licensing is at right now so but yeah it was always tough bad. too because it was like well we can use this for free it's open source and then you got to a certain level it's like wait a minute not anymore like we just crossed some <laughs> weird threshold into something so <laughs> yeah there yeah. are it, a lot of components in here though i mean for fun. design systems like i'm building a design system and this looks like impressive <laughs> there's a lot yeah yeah, yeah. Basically, that's actually like, if you need all of these just pay for it because it'll be so much cheaper than having all your devs create this <laughs> well we found also we have a 30-day free trial so you can try kendo ui for a whole month which is we found has been about the right time for people to have enough time to dig in and experiment and integrate um and kind of see if it really will work for them mm. and that kind of need for the free tier was less so when it was like we offered this free evaluation period so you yeah. kind of have the opportunity to try it out and and yep. go through all of the components and all of that and instead of kind of hitting that wall like you said and mm-hmm. having that awkward feeling of like oops like i've run up against like the invisible edge of the world in a video game <laughs> right. you can just you just be yep. in it. <laughs> yeah. No. And I think, no, Catherine can definitely speak more to this because she comes from that design side. But something that's really cool about progress that I just, um, I didn't know in the beginning, but I kind of fell for once I was in it was just, we create products to support developers. And so obviously the component library is one of those, but they're constantly innovating and thinking of ways around that story to support you and your team. And so things like coming up with Figma kits, right, that include our components so that you can go ahead and design your UI. And then from the Figma kit, go to, we have a product called Unite UX. And then from that product, you know, go ahead and full in your coding with the components. So I know, Catherine, you can talk to that more because you yeah. like just came from a job using Probably. Figma on the day-to-day. Yeah. <laughs> Probably talk about it for too long. So <laughs> feel free to cut me off. You know, I can't yeah. throw a visual in here while we do this. Like, yeah, I, do it. I, I've been wanting to like tease this. Oh, do you and, have and the find Figma out what Figma Catherine kit? was going to say. Yeah, so, the Figma kit. You should be able this, to get to on our website. It's like, but, oh, <laughs> like what is happening? The Figma side switching? is on the right. <laughs> what is that? Yeah. So this is a side-by-side of an actual component, something that's been built with Kendo React on the left and on the right is the Kendo UI kit for Figma. So uh, like Alyssa mentioned, one of the things that I really, really like about Kendo is that we're focused on supporting designers as much as the developers. Because as a someone who was kind of in that hybrid role, who's been on the design side, I've used a lot of component libraries that are not terribly interested in the design experience. And a lot of designers can kind of push back on the adoption of a third-party component library because they feel like it's stifling or they feel like it's frustrating or they know that they'll have to work around this other thing and they're limited Mm -hmm. in how they can customize it and work with it. Um, And we really wanted that to not be the case with Kendo. Um, So the... the Even even like what we're doing with like SAS right now, we're doing a rewrite through the Angular side. I don't don't know if React's... Are you doing the same thing where they're exposing certain parts of the API so that when you do like um, brand theming in like SAS or SCSS, you can easily like at an API level override what Kendo UI has. So you can just like Mm. essentially like lay a blanket over, you know, with your brand. And then... That's very nice. So you can replace like the SAS variables maybe and... Mm -hmm. Yep. Insert, there, yeah. yeah. So it yeah. works really well with those Figma kits. The Figma kits that break down every single component that we have all the way down. They follow an atomic design structure. So you can edit like these components in Figma. We make use of the Figma components so that when you edit one thing, it changes across the entirety mm-hmm. of the Figma kits, applies to all of the components. And then all of the design tokens in our Figma kits are aligned perfectly with our SAS variable names. So uh, you can 
look at it and know uh, and do that manually. Or as Alyssa mentioned, you can use our like export through Unite UX and it will mm. spit out exactly the theme <laughs> that your designers created in the Figma kids. You mm. can throw that SAS file into your application and it will yeah. automatically like just click into place. And like those were, those were just born from our team being like, hey, what's what do you see that's needed right now, like in the dev community, right? Like, and yeah. like, what, what are we missing in this story and in this path? And so then they just kind of created a team to go and make that or to, to build that thing. So that's something that we're constantly, and you know, we were talking about the difficulties of our roles and like, what is a dev rel? That's something that we're constantly asked to do is just like, almost like be the eyes and ears in the community and like try and be like, what, what's, what's a need right now? What's, what's mm-hmm. a pain point? So that's, yeah, that's I get that. Are those tokens the same, uh, just the same names? Or are you trying any plugins that are actually going to use those tokens and be able to extract them to things like uh, style dictionary or something like that? Yeah, both. So um, we have a piece of software called Unite UX that will allow you to kind of do that. It kind of does the same side by side thing that you saw on the website where mm-hmm. you can pull in, it will, using the plugin that we wrote to correspond to it. It will pull everything from Figma into Unite UX and then put your code in your design side by side. And so you can do any like little fine tuning tweaks. And then there's an export button in Unite UX. Once you've done all those little tweaks and everything literally looks perfect when you move that slider, you hit the export button. It exports SAS file as well as like storybook documentation and like Oh, well, Starbucks, super <laughs> cool. If I cannot write storybook documentation so cool. and you will do it for me, I will give you my job. Oh, <laughs> oh I love, I'm like just now getting into storybook. I'm like, this is magic. <laughs> we should be doing more of this. I can't believe you're uh, like yeah. storybook, Brittany. Differ, different opinions. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like having so much fun. It is magic. <laughs> it's almost a little too magic sometimes, which I didn't think I would ever say that. But oh, okay. okay. You mean knobs and buttons? Uh, controls <laughs> now. There's no more knobs. It's controls right. now. It's all right. built in now. <laughs> knobs are so three years ago. Wait, who <laughs> even uses the knobs? The greatest stream <laughs> ever. <laughs> 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 um, so I was, I was taking a look at the uh, kind of the UI kit page here. So just to, again, I'm such a visual person. If I'm out here and I say get UI kits, looks like it it kind of takes me takes over to Figma. To, to Figma. Um, and do I just pick like I want to do web UI components default and then duplicate? Yeah. And I'm so good? that gets into our theming, right? Because we have... T- our default theme yeah. that's our colors but then we also support material in case your team already has material and then bootstrap in case you already mm-hmm. are using bootstrap um and then also custom right but then you would start from default and build your own but Catherine, yeah. you want to talk more about because we've got the unite ux one and then i don't even know what insta relinker is what's happening over there do you know that's, what that is that was more of an internal project that we also published to help like okay. Yeah, relink stuff within Figma files. It's cool, but it's not necessarily related to this. <laughs> okay. um, so I would yeah, ma- so- imagine on the Angular side, you're probably dealing a lot more with the material uh, theming. I would assume. Uh yeah. I mean, I see it. I see it a lot. I I think. Oh, me and my husband were talking about this the other day. It was a really serious car 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 ride conversation. He was like, <laughs> he was like man what has flat design done to us like as as as, as the internet you know he's like i agree we went too far there a while with the gradients and the the shadows and and i'm like he's like but now we just threw it all out the window and he's like there was stuff to learn from that so you're getting me on a material kick material is great (laughs) that is exactly how art trends have worked throughout all of history (laughs) like yeah where they're like and pivot a hundred percent. That's why almost any like art movement, the next one is like post whateverism, impressionism, post impressionism, modernism, post modernism. We swing by back and forth. That's it's the same reason like flare jeans are back. Right? Yeah. Flare like, yeah. <laughs> Have you all been to Target lately? Have you? It's like it's a nightmare in there. <laughs> I can't do it. <laughs> I'm too I, old. <laughs> I, I told you all, I'm like this. I see a train coming and I get flipping on board. All right. I have the flower blossom tops. I have the flare. I am leaning in. All right. So yes. Yes. I see material. I'm like, fine, we're doing this. So yes, we do a lot of material, but I, my favorite is to take a default kind of UI build 
and then to customize the heck out of it. Catherine and I both have these funny demos. Hers is Star trek <laughs> yes. and mine is My Little pony E. But it's just to show you the <laughs> versatility of our components because you can't tell that there are components because they're so customized. Yep. And that's something I really love because um, I, I just – I'm. I love writing CSS and I don't want to take that away from people. I don't want to take the ability <laughs> to go in and customize something or create something. I want us as a team to support you, to allow you to do that, but also to allow you if you don't want to write CSS to do that. So that's that is great developer experience. You don't get in the way and you provide things to make it easier for the developer. I love it. Yeah. I mean, we've definitely got for people that are never in their lives going to open Figma, like we've got theme builders and we've got basic themes and like you can use Kendo right out of the box and it's going to look sharp. Like mm -hmm. it looks good. But if you suddenly decide I need to make my entire app look exactly like the Elkars menu system from Star Trek, for example, mm -hmm. that's also totally something you can do. <laughs> I like the for example. Okay. <laughs> Hypothetically, I don't know yeah. anyone who would who would do, do that. that. <laughs> there used to be, um, this, is, this is going back jQuery days, but there used to be a way to like go into this whole like theming world. Is there still like an application or like mm -hmm. a web thing that you can dive into and like pick different stuff. Mm -hmm. I think the theme builder is what you're thinking of. Not the theme builder, yeah. It. yeah, it is it's still cool. around. Let me see. We're like, we're like the literal worst like guests we've ever had. Oh. We're oh, like, no. yeah, you it, pull that up because screen sharing. Not. I'm too much of a diva. Like, not I can me. totally <laughs> pull these up for you. I here apologize for making you do all the legwork here. I just be great. I'm enough. totally down with it. <laughs> But yes, you can yeah. go in and pick one of uh, the products and walk through, start theming, and then you should be able to select components. We have. So down below, if you scroll, if there's going to be all the components that we offer. So you can choose to style them all together or like if you're like, no, I just need the variables for the button. That's what uh -huh. I want to customize here. See, so I think it selects them all by default, but there's a thing at the top that can yeah. select them all. So it's really whatever you're doing. One. <laughs> yeah, just, you, can leave, you can totally leave them on and then go to the very bottom and click through to create. And then at this point, this is it's loading in the components and then you've got the ability to customize those variables. But the that's what down. I'm wow. really excited about is like, yes, you have these variables right now, but like that API is getting bigger this year. Like each yeah. release that we do this year, like the ability to go in and like she was saying at an atomic level and just touch things, customize them, change them, tweak them, override them. Like it's, it's going to be so much more powerful. I'm really, With really a excited. Too, so you can see it and it's, Oh easy. yeah. this Yeah. yeah. I love it. So for people that are like Figma kids, that's cute. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is like developer friendly too. Right. Mm -hmm. Because, yeah, there's, I mean, realistically, as much as, like, I'm a huge design nerd and love to get into Figma and, like, fiddle with all the little tiny things, I think there's yeah. also, we talked a little bit about that, like, startup life, <laughs> like, earlier. Mm -hmm. That's not always, was that this, did that jump to another podcast where we were talking about <laughs> startup things? <laughs> startup life, you're doing a little bit of everything, you're wearing a million hats, you might not have a designer who's there I, uh, every time that you need them to help you update something. Yeah. be able to have a tool like this that gives developers the power and the the ability to make design choices that look good, to customize, to to build well, things in a field. And not only that, Catherine, but I am shocked by the amount of people that I've come across on the day to day that don't like to spend time in CSS. I don't like, like they, like they have the ability to, but they don't want to. And that to me like it's funny because, you know, I work on a team that creates d the components for people. So you'd think I'd understand this mentality, but I'm like, why wouldn't you want to spend your day in a SAS file? Like, <laughs> <laughs> so Brittany can literally spend like two hours on four pixels. And I'm like, can we just like get the blog out? Like, and I will uh, notice one thing and I will be yeah. like, then I will go down a rabbit hole of like the next thing and the next thing. Yeah. And to yeah. say that about components too, I am building a breadcrumb component at work right now. And if you could just hand me a React TypeScript breadcrumb component, I will do the styling. Just give yeah. me the component. The and component. Yeah. happily just live in that SAS file. I'm right there with you, Brittany. So yeah. it's right? very perplexing See, when I'm like, Jay, you do blasphemy. <laughs> it's blasphemy <laughs> me to not love CSS, right? Oh, yeah. I think but. there were a couple of jobs that I only got because I was like, I would love to do your CSS for you. And they were like, please. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They, that, they were like, they were like, we need She's a custom 
color picker built that hooks into our like real life printers. And I was like, me, me, like inline, like SVGs and like color math. I was like, me, like that's yeah. so it's very fascinating because I find a lot of these really intelligent people, right? They're like writing like the back end or like the back of the front end, as I like to call it. And then they just won't, they won't go near it. They're like, it's not centered on the page. I'm like, go center that sucker. And they're like, and I'm like, <laughs> you just wrote that whole API like and you won't go center that sucker. Now. Like what? It's I, so easy now. It's, it's so, so easy now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Centering was a bad example. Go bold. No, it, I think right? it's actually like, a good example because that's the one that everyone jokes about. It right? is. So it's like, still the one that everyone jokes about. And it's not an issue. something. <laughs> Display grid, place item center, done. Wow. <laughs> we are on other side. It's just like team grid, team flex. Because I, I was, was like, gonna display say. flex. I'm team grid. Like center it, boom. Like, oh, you're team oh. grid. Hi, team grid. <laughs> nice to meet you. Do we have, do we have to I... do like 100 view height on that or anything? Like, isn't there more to it? No, no it's not, not that's, No, that's it. It's literally two, two lines. Two it's lines. so easy. Can now. we do it in less? Hang on. Can we do it in less? I mean, I guess it depends on what you're centering. I mean, you yeah. can do margin zero yeah. auto or margin uh -huh. inline auto. That's only centering on one way, though. I need it both. I think you'd always need Oh, you need both ways. Oh, you need both ways, then you're going to have to go three lines. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Center it. Line item center. And <laughs> yeah, so, derailed again. I, th I think we it's did a really good job. It's hardly a table-based layout. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is back to your email uh, theming, right? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Dark days. Dark days. Um, so I, I don't know. Did a really cool job with like the visual side to like the whole grid explanation. I just wanted to show off code for a second, and you guys yeah. can like tear it apart or explain it or whatever you like, dude. <laughs> so I've got the Angular one up first, mm -hmm. and this is by someone named Alyssa Michelle. I don't know if anyone knows oh. this person. <laughs> oh, is it Michelle or Nicole? Um, so my so middle name's cool. Michelle. <laughs> <laughs> And my GitHub, my GitHub username, because I started programming in college, and I actually went by Michelle. And so I didn't know <laughs> what to make my username, so I made it both my first and middle name. And now that I'm married, it's Alyssa Nichol everywhere else. Oh, if you know cool. how to change your GitHub username or who, like the person to contact, I so well, desperately can. want GitHub, to. You can. Nicole. You it can just, very easily. I just everything. switched mine. I, I switched mine too. Well, yeah. I swear to you, the last time I checked, that wasn't a thing. What are you talking you're, about? You're blowing her whole world I just, right I now. I just went from Agent on P to Coder Cat Dev, so you can do it. I'll show it's just you. like in the settings now? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it'll, it'll forward your stuff for a while. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. But anyways. Okay. Anyway, so this, sorry. This is, this is an <laughs> Angular setup, and it looks like they're templating in a single component, just like I like to. Can you kind of break down what's <laughs> happening here? Yes. So that's our sexy grid. Uh, and you can see it says kendo-grid there. And we're passing in the data. And I'm trying to see. We have... It's uh, this one is yes a single a single guy bud but like oh, guy bud he's a single file uh, it doesn't have to be though uh, I always when I, I get these examples from the team I just I usually rip them apart and, and put them into multiple files because I'm a nut but you can see uh, inner things as far as like you're defining grid columns and telling it what data is going to go into that um, but we we even have there's a let me let me pull up the I'll pull up the docs because I'm going to show you. It's pretty small. I can my bump it favorite. Up. I'm going to show you my. Let me share my screen. Where are we? We're StreamYard. Uh, share my screen. I'll share it all. Hopefully. Okay. If you can see that, I'm going to pull up my favorite go to. So I pull up Grid on Development Branch as my go to guy in our docs. And I really, really love our docs. I think sometimes, like in the very beginning, I was confused because we do have uh, like 100 plus components. But when you go to NPM, like a button, for example, you will npm install the Kendo UI button package. Um, but that has, if I scroll down here, it has these seven uh, like button baby components. So you've got, <laughs> you know, like the button group or the chip or the split button. And so um, they umbrellaed these like this so that you're not, you know, obviously de like all or nothing, right? You can, whenever you go for like date inputs, you can go ahead and grab, uh, you know, the date inputs or however sometimes they're one-offs like our grid if i go to there are you grid there you are hello okay um and our other cool thing is 
uh, the examples live here where like you can view the source. I'm loving. I really do. I know. I love Rodox. I nerd out about it. But the um, I wanted to show you this instead of that because when we go to our getting started is great because every single time you go to getting started, they walk you through setup as far as the ng either add command if you're using that schematic or if you need to do it manually, like if you're using, for example, like scam or feature modules, you'll want to do the more step by step. But they walk you through that for every single one, which I love. I think that's super beginner friendly. But then over here, you can see we've got like the grid has all of these like additional options of adding in filtering or a allowing grouping. And so that's where if you go to like grouping basics, for example, and I view the source, this is how I learn. Like I, I just need to see like how your group, like how you're hooking into that thing, like whatever it is. And so I really like that just up front and center, you can go ahead and say, oh, group equals group. And then you scroll down to the, the code chunk and you see how they're doing grouping. Um, and then also like the in the inline, you know, see seeable version, the render. I need the same thing where I can see like how it hooks in and then I can yes. run with it. I just need to see it. I need I, it that's exactly. Yeah. I'm like, okay, cool. I get the, like, show me the actual line of code. Like, <laughs> but then and, of course you can go over to like see material or see it in, um, there's, they're adding a ways to like customize this where it's not just default, but it's like default Nordic. Right. So like yeah, that's, that's, that's been cool. cool to like jump between those. Um, but I'm really proud of our team because they built, Oh, this is, this is amazing. Oh, they so built these, so great. Yes. Right. They built these examples like from scratch in, in, in the docs. But if you want to just click on this, edit and stack bullets and you have like your own like Dev little, environment just yep. running. Yep. And it's just right there. And and that's, I think, something that's really powerful is just the the massive amount of documentation and code, um, which needs to be because some of our, like the grid, not only does she include, like, how many components does she have, Catherine? Because she's got like a, a, a bunch. A I genuinely <laughs> don't know. There's well, so you think about a grid, right? Like if it's going to have paging, grid. then it's going to have the ability to do paging. If it's going to have filtering, then there's going to be drop downs. There's a button, obviously, somewhere on your grid. Like So there's a bajillion. Not only do you have a ton of components inside the grid, but then the features that those components hold. So I'm just really... I'm proud of our team for the way that they constantly tackle documentation and try to keep it up because, I mean, can you imagine trying to use something like this without the... <laughs> I actually wanted to point something out too, that that is a great thing to do in a design system. We are grouping all of our components and shipping it as one version. And you saw that that NPM install script was very large because you're installing a bunch of things, but that's very nice for versioning purposes because you don't have to break your entire application. You can just install the updates you need. Yep. So that's really smart and really great that they kind of sub chunked it even. Mm -hmm. Yeah, performance wise too. Like a lot of times you only need a half of those things. So I, I was gonna say, I don't know if I've Catherine, have you ever seen a project that uses all like hundred? Uh, with truth taking, <laughs> it usually no. like evens out. You don't get all of the stuff you don't need in a mm -hmm. shipped no. complete version either, but mm -hmm. Yeah, a lot now of times. I want to take that as like a personal challenge. Now I, I, I actually want to do it with you because I was just thinking yes. we like need to make thing. something that uses, yes, that but like actually so uses it. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Okay, we'll make it Great. happen. Okay, cool. That's kind of fun. <laughs> now, now, like you need to also add <laughs> Angular parts and React parts within it as well. Oh, yeah. Oh. And then, yes. and then, and then, and then like, Maui's out of preview, we'll just shove it in a Maui Blazor app and it'll just be like, all and, and because I was asking my friends, I was like, so if we've got our Angular app inside of a Maui app, can I also use like .NET Maui components like on the outer parts and then inside I'm using Angular Kendo UI components and they're like, yes. So now all we have to do is add React to this madness and you have this soup of amazingness. I'm what gonna... an absolute Frankenstein's monster. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know if you've heard of Astro, but that's what you can do with Astro. You can put React, Ruby spell, anything in your app. Wow. Use it all. You could oh, use it in the same component, goodness. but I don't know why you would do that. I I was at a conference and someone came up to me afterwards and they were talking to me about this Franken app, but it was in production and it had a lot of users and it was really scary. And they were talking to me about what their plans were because it had, it was like two different front end frameworks and then two different .NET yeah. frameworks that different parts were built in and different ones were working with. And I was like, so what are you going to do with it? Like, <laughs> so where's, what's your plan here? Like, cause they were asking me what they Nothing. should do with it. And I was like, um, 
tear it apart and, yeah, fix and it. say so we, we I joke. worked for a company this that had sense. a similar setup in the past and there were a lot of ideas around what we should do with it and I'll tell you what we really did with it was draw straws anytime we had to go back into that other one and fix things oh. up the use of it is like micro front ends and I think that's where it comes into play where you have different dev teams who want to use different things and that's kind different of nice things, yeah Island architecture. Here we go again. Oh. Isn't it once a week? The hype get train. On get on the, the hype train. train. Slinkity <laughs> just joined Astro too. That should be my perfect pick today. Slinkity There's and Ben time. Just hey, joined hey Astro. do you want to start like your perfect pick? Yes. Mm -hmm. Let's do our perfect picks. Perfect <laughs> pick. Get it. This is so great. <laughs> Brittany, send me the link she's talking about and i'll, I'll start okay I'll, I'll see if i can find it uh so my first perfect pick i was unfortunately sick and i i wasn't sick enough to take a covid test thankfully but uh something killed me tuesday so i was mm -hmm. down and out and i flipped on suspicion just to hopefully sleep through which it kind of probably caught too much of my attention so mm -hmm. i slept through a couple episodes and had to rewind but holy smokes it was awesome i loved it till the end it was probably like finished up a little too quickly but i won't ruin oh. it uh, i would definitely watch it it was it was neat it was, so that was my good. first pick. i liked it now my second pick i don't fully understand still <laughs> so this is ryan florence talking about it. remix remixing react router and I completely read through it. I completely understand what he's saying. But what I don't understand is, are we renaming React Router to Remix? I don't get that. So please, I'll, I'll, I'll throw the link out here. If anyone understands this better than I do, send me a DM and tell me, no, we're not renaming this. Developer yeah. experience. It is literally everywhere we look right now. It's in everything. DX. Mm -hmm. It's important. Yeah. Yep. Gotta love DX. Um, I'm jumping all over. Oh, no. I think this might be Alyssa's pick. Robert Tables yeah. is right there too. He's one of my oh, yeah. friends. Yeah, he made this. So my pick is the show that Catherine and I started today. He made this uh, beautiful <laughs> clip. Um, because we started a Fantasy Friday stream where we nerd out, and it's just beautiful. <laughs> so come back next Friday. We're gonna do a D and D special one, but. This was, you can press play if you want. It was us being goofy. And it was <laughs> us being just nerds. Uh, I'm like, this, this is so on... great. I need this in my life every Friday. So I'll be tuning in. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to comment on, I, I think Catherine didn't have time to change, but you must have like went and worked out and switched from white to black. <laughs> I don't know. It's oh, been... called out. I have this really bad addiction of changing clothes and most people don't notice it. So it's kind of, <laughs> it's funny that you, I change at least four times <laughs> Wow. Yeah. There was nice. a single hour between when we. Oh, I know. It's a problem. <laughs> it's the contrast. It's white to black, so it was just I like know. just. It's very oh, easy. Yeah. To <laughs> But yeah, See, I probably wouldn't notice. Like I wear one. the same thing every day. Like I've got some kind of weird <laughs> Steve Jobs situation happening. <laughs> Get your turtlenecks, folks. I mean, you uh, didn't change closet. between last hour and this hour, so I would say it's a problem. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> oh my goodness! Oh, but no, code it live. Twitch.tv slash code it live. We uh, we we yeah. do UI Mondays, but now we also do Fantasy Fridays. So check it out. <laughs> And nice. if we ever manage to name a show without a day of the week, we'll let you know. Well, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Got to get that alliteration in. I know. Naming I know. things is hard. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> it's the worst. So <laughs> it is so the worst. I think this is Brittany's first one, right? Uh, sure. Mm -hmm. Scroll down. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, let me close the cookie. <laughs> yeah, the, the cookie thing was ginormous. Oh, there we go. And we didn't even get to talk about DXPs today. So that's what I wanted to ask. Like, what is your DXP definition? It's just how Does cool anyone know what a can DXP be with is? developers, right? I, it's a digital experience platform. No, I don't know what you're saying. Oh, <laughs> okay. I thought this that's was what developer progress experience. is, right? I don't know what you're saying. <laughs> Catherine, help. <laughs> Catherine! <laughs> sorry i'm dying at the idea of like that's what progress is and both of us just just like blank stares totally like, 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 um the most panicked i think i've ever seen 
This is where I, I need to like, integrate this multiple products together to build them out. So like a CMS, a database, like you could put all the pieces together and the digital experience platform like links it. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I can yeah. see that. I would I think say, that's, that's I really hope know. Tim is still watching because the DXP <laughs> analogy was just like too great. They just like they're developers oh and they just went blank. Uh, <laughs> I have yeah. genuinely never in my life heard the term DXP. I've never heard the term and I'm still a this explains fuzzy. it. So go read this Does blog. It? That's why I'm on that <laughs> Does it? Okay, I will go read. <laughs> oh jeez. Oh, okay. Oh, this is the other oh. thing. This weird monstrosity that it's I've terrifying. been using for a while. But I hold it the other way. I'm so happy you finally joined the club. Like, oh yeah, I had never heard of these, and I don't know how I'd not heard of something in the tech world because I love wow. gadgets. But I had this bad wrist pain, and I like couldn't use my other mouse, and so I tried this. Mm. It was like twenty five when I got it, thirty bucks. Mm. It's great. It takes That's a minute awesome. to get used to, but it's great. That's great because I I have this fear. When I had the I have a two year old, and when I got pregnant with him, I love gaming, I love coding, obviously, and um, I started having carpal tunnel issues bad, and so mm -hmm. I actually ended up having the surgery. But um, they were saying, well, since you're so young, you'll probably have to have it, you know, one more time. <laughs> oh, fantastic! <laughs> like down the road, and so <laughs> anything like this, like it's great to learn about. I haven't tried gaming with it yet, so that might be interesting. Mm. I'm a pretty big gamer mm. too, but I don't get time anymore. I have three kids now. Once you have more kids, you're just you're done <laughs> with gaming. <laughs> yeah. I put the Astro Link in the private chat, Alex. I, I have it. I, okay. uh, I accidentally started playing it. So. Oh, okay. Yeah. If you want to make it full screen, because it is so great. His whiteboard. I, ooh, ooh. Hang on, I, I clicked the full screen button on mine. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> oh. oh, it's lagging. There he goes. <laughs> He's going into space. So Ben Holmes <laughs> created Slinkity, which is kind of similar to Astro, where you can use different frameworks in whatever you want and you can actually even create your own it's based in 11d and you can just build whatever you want and in whatever you want and so he's joining the astro team cool. and we were talking about astro so i thought that was a good place for that and he said he delayed his announcement for starting because his helmet came a day late <laughs> yeah no that totally makes sense right you gotta wait for the helmet yeah yeah I'll you gotta wait for the helmet yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, a bit i'm you with him on that one like, yeah <laughs> Oh, the whiteboard is the whole bit too. So, like the whiteboard and the helmet, he just made it happen. That was impressive. I mean, yeah. that took some time. <laughs> I mean, not Are as much time as my custom make of the dusty stick emoji is going to take, but yes. <laughs> <laughs> Alyssa keeps threatening us with an actual physical dusty, dusty I'm going stick. to bring, we're having a conference called DevReach that Progress is throwing. I'm going to bring a real life dusty stick. Like, Catherine was helping me brainstorm how to make it, but it's going to be a stick. Mm -hmm. Do you know that um, that emoji? Like, no, I don't know that one. Apparently, oh! no. I, I get to. Hey, this is we amazing. got we got judged for not knowing DXP, but now the tables. Now. Have <laughs> I may know it if I see it, dusty. but like <laughs> dusty stick. <laughs> it's a custom emoji in Slack, and as oh, okay. much as Alyssa is, is as as much as Alyssa is joking here, oh, she had never heard me? of it. Oh, Nor had the rest of my team when I joined the DevRel yes. team at Progress. Yes. Ew. <laughs> yeah, correct. What does this <laughs> represent? <Ew. laughs> what does Duster want? That's the question. Yeah. <laughs> so oh nobody God. knows. It's just this weird, random emoji custom built into Slack. <laughs> and... And they there's integrated not, it into the platform. It's, there's a couple of things like that in Slack, which I think is amazing and hilarious. Like you can yes. change your notification tones. And one of them is just a woman saying hummus. Oh, <laughs> yes. That is my go-to. Like I, I, it drives my husband crazy. Because she, <laughs> she'll be in the other room. Hummus. Like she got kind of, she was like, huh, in it. She's like, hummus. hummus. And like, I love it. <laughs> Like, I've never loved anything more. Like, it's the best way to find out someone's trying to talk to you. Like, I, why wouldn't yeah. you? Yeah. 
Wow. Slack is full of like cute little internal Easter eggs like that. So the Dusty Stick is my favorite. This team had I never been using it that. The next time someone irritates me, I'm going to wave a Dusty <laughs> Stick at I like to use it as kind of a like, that was a bad joke <laughs> indicator. <laughs> so instead of like a boo or like a dad joke, you get a, you get a Dusty Stick. <laughs> oh, goodness. I don't think my work's picked up on it, but I have these two loaded into Slack. And nice. if I acknowledge something, I put this one. Mm. And if I think it rocks, I put that one. I don't think oh. they've picked up on it yet, though. They're they like, haven't decoded it yet. They're like, Are, does he not want to <laughs> listen to us on this one? I'm like, oh, <laughs> He's like I don't know. Immediately go. <laughs> <laughs> See no, or hear no evil. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, Thank that's you how I would take it. I would take it as a you disagree with me with the headphones on. So you might want to reevaluate how you're using those. Just I know. I, I think I'm messing it up. <laughs> See, and Maybe I, I have party parrot like, kind of energy. energy. Oh, party, party parrot. parrot energy? I thought the, I thought the headphones oh. gave it kind of a like party parrot energy. Oh, okay. Like, yeah. Okay. Okay. I like Good. to use Good. the cat that's like the party parrot, but it's the cat one. Oh, I can <laughs> make a party AJ. <gasps> yes, that's what you yeah. need. That is what you need. It would very clearly be like they the way would get all it. All of us right? just tried to do the party carrot move. Yeah, like, yeah. I I think it's good. Think it's good. <laughs> oh. So for all of you watching this later, it's Friday. <laughs> it is Friday, and it is time to be done. And thank you so much. I will have you back any time. This was so fantastic. <laughs> Yeah, oh, thank, thank you, you for having thank us. you both. If you just want to come and just chat for an hour, that sounds great. Thank yeah, you. that sounds great. Or let's let's talk about DXP next time. No one knows what that is. I I think a deep dive of D, DXP deep dive is needed. Yes, yes, yes that's what we need. <laughs> oh, and Anthony's coming in right at the end. Ciao, everyone. Bye. Mwah. Later.